The hardware that I'm going to use to transmit the signal is a Blade RF with a GSM antenna. Pretty much any antenna will do, just make sure you connect it to the TX port. And then I will use two RTL SDRs, one for receiving the signal and another in SDR sharp to look at the signal. And then I will connect the Blade RF via USB to the computer. And the USB hub is useful in case you don't have enough USB ports. So that's pretty much it. Welcome back for Broadcasting Digital TV Part 2. Now that we have everything installed, we can try and use the tools. The first thing that we need to do is that we need to use DVB-T Blade. But before we do that, we will just make sure that we have our FPA, FPGA loaded. And then we can run this script. Now, the thing is that you need to set the frequency to a frequency that you can use. In my case, I'm using this frequency here because it's largely unused. So that means that I can use this frequency to play with a little bit as long as I don't broadcast continuously or 24-7. Now we can confirm the broadcasting with this command line that I've already typed. This should also be in the description if YouTube lets me, so you can just copy and paste it. So we will just start the listener again. And then we'll just click enter or press enter. And as you can see, we get a nice signal right here. So that's a good indicator that it's working. So while it's transmitting, let's just scan for the channel using our receiver. So in our receiver virtual machine, we will use vscan. And then we will use M for mplay output. And then we will use Let's see, C is equal to DK or Denmark. Now we could test it as well by using VLC. If you haven't installed VLC yet, then you can add get installed VLC. And then you can run it as follows. Frequency is equal to. And in this case, I'm broadcasting on 522 megahertz. And the bandwidth that I'm using is 8 megahertz. So we can try that as well, but let's just wait for this script to finish. Because as you can see, it picked up our channel here, so that's a good indicator that it's working. Now in some cases, it's not going to work, and for some reason, sometimes it will work. And that happens when you run the exact same commands. The radio signal looks 100% the same and there's no logical explanation as to why it's not working because there's nothing visually looking like it's not working correctly. In that case, you can try and unplug your USB device, plug it into a new port maybe, try and avoid USB hubs for the Blade RF and also for the receiving dongle that I'm using in the receiver because I had some issues with using a USB hub, sharing, for example, a hub with this RTL SDR and this RTL SDR. So in my case, I'm using a dedicated port for the Blade RF here, and I'm using a dedicated port for the RTL SDR here. And then for this RTL SDR down here, that's sharing a port with my mouse and also the RTL SDR. So once this program has finished running, then it will produce the necessary input or not input. Well, it is kind of an input. It will produce some data that we will need to write to a new file called channels.conf. And that file can be used with mplayer so we can tune to the DVB-T signal. So this one will take a few more moments to complete because it goes up to 862. And as I mentioned earlier, Sometimes it's not going to work, just keep trying because if you get the signal and you have done exactly as I showed you, then it should work even though sometimes it's not going to work. So be prepared that it may take a little bit 
of time. So this is the command, or not the command, the output that you need to copy. And then it needs to be entered into a new file. And that should be etc. in player channels.conf. And I've already pasted it into this file. So now I can actually try and tune to this channel. But before we do that, let's just have a few more explanations or pro tips. So if you're using the exact same command line as I am, then you will be able to use this in your mplayer.conf file so you won't have to run vscan for five minutes before you can try and see if, see if it works. So I will try and put this in the video description as well. So that way you can just copy and paste. In your case, if you can't use this frequency because maybe it's used in your country, you can choose any of the other frequencies here. So any of these other frequencies with 8 MHz from 474 to 864, you can try and use if they're not already in use by something else. So you should use your SDR device to check if there's anything else broadcasting on these 8 MHz channels. So once you have that done, maybe you, you will want to try just to see if it works, you know, quickly. So let's try, for example, with VLC. Now the issue with VLC is that it's not going to work perfectly with some versions and some codecs. So you can see that you get a lot of errors and you get choppy images and it's not ideal. So in that case, you don't want to use VLC only just for our brief testing. So instead you want to use mplayer instead. So let's try it with mplayer. So let's just confirm that our signal is still being transmitted here as well. It is. And let's see. Let's try and run just mplayer and then just dvb, see if something happens. So it's looking good so far. Let's see. Just wait, give it a few moments. Now, in this case, you can see it says video, no video, starting playback. And I was looking at a bit, I was looking a bit at this issue. And the solution I found was actually quite simple. You just need to use a demuxer, the correct one that is. And I found out that the LAVF is the generally the best DMUX in my case and most likely yours too. So if we just turn on the sound, let's just clear the screen and then just run it. See if we get a signal. Cross your fingers, see if it works. You have been my friend. You came back for me. Why would you do this? The needs of the one outweigh the needs of the many. I have been and ever shall be your friend. Superior officer, you are also my friend. I have been and always shall be yours. So, as you can see, it's definitely working, so that's very awesome. Now, if we take a look at the CPU, CPU usage, we can see that it is using 8.3, well, that's Compass, and M player is using 3.7. I believe Compass is part of mPlayer, most likely. I may be totally wrong, but I think it probably is. Now, if we take a look at some of the other stats, you can see that it is using around one gigabyte of RAM. So that means that you can assign your virtual machine around one gig of RAM. Now, if you keep letting this program run, it will encounter some issues, but you can usually get a full play without any issues. 
So you can see uh, it starts to overlap, so you will just have to restart it. So, and you can see here that the I.O. looks nice as well. There's nothing major going on. Most of the uh, uh, hard disk is idle. So that means that we don't really have to worry about lots of files being written, for example, like a a fast web server. So that's pretty much it. Stay tuned and subscribe. I would accept that as an axiom. I have a human half, you see, as well as an alien half, submerged, constantly at war with each other. I survive it because my intelligence wins out over both, makes them live together. I am a Vulcan, bred to peace. I speak from pure logic. Humans make illogical decisions, believing what they choose. What does your telepathic mind tell you now? Logic clearly dictates that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. As I turned and my eyes beheld you, I displayed emotion. I beg forgiveness. You have been my friend. You came back for me. Why would you do this? The needs of the one outweigh the needs of the many. Live long and prosper. I'll be your friend. Live long and prosper. Live long and prosper.